Welcome to Ruby Thursday. I'm Melissa Wanish. This is Ruby Snack number 53, Using Git with Vagrant. In this episode, you'll learn to use your local SSH key with your Vagrant box, push to GitHub from files located on your local machine, clone from GitHub into the Vagrant box, halt your Vagrant box, and destroy your Vagrant box. If you want to code along, be sure you have a virtual box and Vagrant installed and a Vagrant box created. You'll also need an app located in the same directory as the Vagrant file. Check out these Ruby Snacks to catch up on the series. That's Ruby Snack number 50, 51, and 52. We're going to be using SSH agent forwarding in order for the Vagrant box to know about your SSH key. You will need your SSH key to have been added to your SSH agent. If you are already pushing to GitHub without using a password every time, then you are good to go. Next, it is as simple as adding this line to your Vagrant file, config ssh forward agent true. I have my Vagrant file open, and now I'm adding that simple line to use the ssh key. Now let's test the connection. We'll Vagrant up to have our Vagrant box working. We'll ssh into our Vagrant box, cd into Vagrant, and then call the command to check that everything's okay with GitHub, which is ssh-t get at github.com, and then enter yes when asked to authorize a new host. Now you'll test out a commit. For our example app, I'm going to create the first commit and GitHub repo as usual, and you may need to set some Git settings on this brand new box. Let me show you how I did it. In my terminal, I'm running vagrant up, and this takes just a moment as it's checking to make sure there are any updates or anything like that. In this case, I didn't need any updates. Now we'll SSH into the Vagrant box. And I'll go ahead and CD into Vagrant. And let's see what's there. Frosty is there. So let's go ahead and CD into Frosty as well. And there is our Rails app. Now in recording this episode, I actually did this test a little bit before I recorded it. So I went ahead and said yes. This is what you get when the Vagrant box is using your SSH key to connect to GitHub you may need to type in yes to accept the new host. Now let's go ahead and get init, and then I will get status and see that we have a brand new app, so we need to add everything. And I'll do that with git add dot, and then when we type get status again, everything's ready to be committed. So I'll just create a commit with the message initial commit. Now when I did this, because the Vagrant box wasn't totally set up for my user, I needed to go ahead and tell Git who I am. So I will go ahead and include the email address. Oh, that entered, so it made it the you at example, but let me go ahead and make it a real email address for melissa at rubythursday.com. And this will be what is assigned to the commit. And now we'll go ahead and enter the name as well. And we'll enter my name, you can enter your name, and we should be ready to go now. So when we try to commit again, it commits. Now let's go ahead and add the repo. I went to GitHub, I added a repo. Now I'm adding that to Git here. And now we will push to that origin master for the first time, and we succeed. Now what if you want to clone directly into the box? Now note, if you are going to work with an app completely within the Vagrant box, you should install and use a better code editor than what comes standard. For example, you use Vim or Emacs. It's not a GUI. It's as if you are working directly in the Ubuntu server. That comes with Nano, and that's what I use and show when I'm just working on servers. But if you're going to be developing a whole app, you need to know Vim or Emacs. The cloning process is pretty much exactly how you would clone to your local machine. You move into the main Vagrant directory, clone the app, bundle, and then install necessary dependencies. If this box wasn't built for that app, you're probably going to need to add some software. Back in our terminal, I'll cd out of Frosty into the main Vagrant directory, enter git clone, and then I'm going to paste in for our main Ruby Thursday example app. And it's going to bring it down from GitHub. And you see now we have Frosty and Ruby Thursday. 
Let's see the end of Ruby Thursday. Oh, we already see an issue. Ruby Thursday wants to use a version of Ruby that is not installed on the Vagrant box. Let's see which version that is by entering which Ruby. And we see it's 2.3.3. Now I'm going to go ahead and change Ruby Thursday to go ahead and use the updated Ruby version instead. Or you could install another version of Ruby with RVM. Let's go ahead and say yes, and we're saving it as an example of changing something on the app. Now let's go ahead and bundle. And I always have an issue with Nokugiri on a new computer, so we'll go ahead and need to install that separately. That's pretty standard that you have to do that. At least that's been my experience. Then we try to bundle again and see if it continues or if it gets caught up somewhere else. And this time it's having trouble with Capybara WebKit. Well, Capybara WebKit is dependent on Qt. So we need to install that and we're installing it for Ubuntu. I got that information from the gem documentation. So you see, yes, and it's going to install. I, of course, have sped this up for time's sake. And then when we bundle again, it's successful. So now we change something. So get status. We've changed the gem file and the gem file lock. So now I'm going to commit that here on the Vagrant box. Now that we have get all set up, so I'm changing the Ruby version. And now I'm going to get push origin master. And because we've all set up with GitHub with our SSH key, it pushes with no problem. Finally, let's talk about a few more commands that you'll need for your Vagrant box. First up is halting your Vagrant box. When you're done for the day, you want to go ahead and halt it so it's not running all the time. So from the same directory as your Vagrant file, you'll simply call Vagrant halt, and then you can run Vagrant status to make sure that it's off. It's pretty easy, so I'm going to move on to the next command, which is to destroy your Vagrant box. If you are completely done with working on that app or you're just playing around with Vagrant for this tutorial, you want to go ahead and destroy the Vagrant box so it's not taking up space on your local machine. From the same directory as your Vagrant file, you'll type the command Vagrant Destroy and then you'll enter a capital Y at the prompt and it will destroy your box. All right, back in our terminal, let's exit out of our Vagrant box and then we will run vagrant destroy and it gives you a prompt to make sure you're really sure you want to destroy that and you say yes and as you see it runs just a few things and it's gone we'll run vagrant status just to be sure and it says there isn't a box so you could always rebuild your box if you need to here are a couple of resources you can check out here's an article on how to use the ssh agent forwarding with vagrant if you're not too familiar or need a refresher on how to generate a new SSH key or add it to the SSH agent, there's an article from GitHub. And then another article on cloning a repository. In case you need a refresher on that, you don't do it every day. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you are not already on my mailing list, head on over to rubythursday.com to sign on up. If you are not subscribed to my channel on YouTube, click that big red button to do so. You get the episodes just a little bit before everyone else. If you have any questions or comments, it's best to leave them on YouTube. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.